Welcome to video six of the Learn Brazilian Portuguese with Songs video series. I'm Susana Zarayski, I'm the author of the book Languages Music or El Idiomas Musica in Spanish. And I love to help people learn foreign languages using songs because that's how I learned seven languages by using a lot of music and media. And I'm very happy to be working with Luciana to be using Brazilian songs to help people learn uh, Portuguese, especially Spanish speakers who are learning the distinctions between the two languages. O prazer é meu, Susana. Mm -hmm. Pleasure is mine. Eu sou Luciana, da Street Smart Brazil. We offer Portuguese lessons via webcam. We have students all over the world, even students who live in Brazil and learn with us via webcam. So you can have your private Street Smart Brazil tutor anywhere in the world. Visit streetsmartbrazil.com to get more information and to request your demo class, your free demo class. All right, so today we picked the song Amigo by Roberto Carlos, and many Spanish speakers have actually heard a lot of his music on Spanish radio because he sings in Spanish, and uh, obviously he sings in Portuguese as well because he is oh hey the king in Brazil because he has been popular ever since he was a child. He has made albums in Portuguese and Spanish, and he is coming to the Bay Area to San Jose in June 2012, and you can find links to the tickets to his concerts on Street Smart Brazil. And we decided to pick his song Amigo because it's very popular, and it's also sung by Mark Antony, the salsa singer. He sings a salsa version of the song, and it became very popular when the last Pope died. It was all over Spanish radio all the time. So many Spanish speakers know this song, and the lyrics in Portuguese and Spanish are very similar. So we decided that we are going to contrast the Spanish version of the song to the Portuguese version to help you understand the differences between the two um, between the two languages. Yeah, and we're going to give you many pronunciation tips and grammar tips as well. All right, so we are going to sing part of the song in Portuguese and in Spanish, and then Luciana will say the words in Portuguese and I will say them in Spanish. So you can hear the distinction between the two languages, both in the uh, version as it is sung and how it is spoken. So we're going to go over the section. O seu coração é uma casa de portas abertas. Amigo, você é o mais certo das horas incertas. Now in Spanish, it's... Es tu coração uma casa de puertas abiertas. Tu eres realmente o mais certo em horas incertas. So how does it sound in, in Portuguese? Well, so say? let's do that and let's um, give pronunciation tips as Very we good. do that. The first sentence was... O seu coração é uma casa de portas abertas. And in Spanish it's, es tu coração uma casa de puertas abiertas. Very different. Yeah, so the first word I would like to talk about is coração. Mm -hmm. We have the um sound, nasal sound, and we talked a lot about the nasal sounds in video number two of this series, so check it out. That's right, that's why I wear a clown nose on my nose, so you understand how to use your nose. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about this C, the letter C with the little thing under it. We call it C, that's our word for C. Cedilha, it's the little thing, C cedilha. C cedilha, what it does is you read the C as an S, so Coração. And I want the Spanish speakers to pay very close attention to this because there are many words that in Portuguese have the C cedilha and in Spanish have a Z, but the sound is different. So, coração. Right, and if you happen to have ever studied French, it's the same with the mm. C cedilha in French. And the song has another word, the word for head, cabeça. So again, the sa, cabeça. It also has the word abraço. Okay, so all the cedilha sounds. Okay, now what about the word casa? Because in Portuguese you're saying casa, but it's written with an S just like in Spanish, so I bet Spanish speakers will want to say é uma casa de portas abertas. Here's a, an easy rule. When you have one S between two vowels, you read like a Z, casa. Almost like the word easy in English, where the S is not pronounced as EC, it's EZ. Exactly. And another word that my Spanish speaking students, um, it's hard to change the way your brain functions, right? Because you have a habit of saying things in a certain way. But it's the word coisa, thing. So it's za, coisa. Oh, so many things <laughs> to remember. 
And then there's also the word that we hear in the song, sohizo, right? Oh, great. Yeah, again, you have the S. You actually have the first S is the normal S, so. You have the double R, which in Portuguese sounds like the English age, he, so he. And you have the one S between two vowels, zu, so he, zu. And you also have when the word ends in O and there's no graphic accent on the O, we tend to say U, so he, zu. And Another complication is that smile in Spanish is feminine, sonrisa. So not only do you have the fact that the R in Spanish is slightly rolled, sonrisa, and then you have an S instead of a Z, it's feminine. So this is a word that you really have to pay attention to when you're speaking in Portuguese. And it makes you smile, so it makes sense. So is a smile. <laughs> All right, so here another thing we hear is porta in Portuguese and puerta in, in Spanish, mm -hmm. right? And it will happen with many other words, so just keep your ears open to identify that difference. Porta. And também, aberta. Hmm, porta and aberta, that's right. And you know, another thing we see here is, are the two words mas and mais. And if you go to video number five, you will hear more of how to make the distinction between the two words. Yes, we talk a lot about mais and mais. Yes, in yes. the other video. <laughs> because, believe me, a lot of Spanish speakers make a mistake in Portuguese with this word. All right, I'll sing the next section in both Portuguese and Spanish so you can hear. Às vezes em certos momentos difíceis da vida Em que precisamos de alguém para ajudar na saída Em certos momentos difíceis que há em la vida Buscamos a quem nos ajude a encontrar la salida Great. Yeah, so how does it sound when you read those words in Portuguese? So the first sentence is, as vezes. Mm -hmm. And before I go on, I want to mention this. I need to hear the final S of each of the words. As vezes. That's right. And then uh, for Spanish speakers, you might want to say as vezes. But it's not because it's a Z, as vezes. Okay, so as vezes, em certos momentos difíceis da vida. So or in Spanish, you'd say, in ciertos momentos difíciles que hay en la vida. All right, so we got another issue here. It's difícil, right? <laughs> so, in momentos difíciles da vida. How do you remember when you're going from Spanish to Portuguese to get rid of the L? We have a rule, actually two rules, for the plural of the words that end in I-L. Um, you usually just drop the L and you add an S. So, for instance, the word gentil, the plural is gentis. Sutil, sutis. But, mas, we talked about mas <laughs> yeah. in bad. video 5. Um, if the word has a graphic accent as difícil, then you actually make the plural by adding A's. Difíceis. Same thing, fácil, fáceis. So that's the rule. Hmm, okay, all right. So Spanish speakers remember this rule so that when you're doing a, when you're saying the plural in Portuguese, you don't pronounce it as you would in Spanish. All right, well, with the next sentence, what do we have in Portuguese here? Okay, so he's talking about momentos difíceis em que precisamos de alguém para ajudar na saída. Buscamos a quien nos ayude a encontrar la salida. Now, I like to talk about the sound of the J, ajudar. And in our video two of this series, we actually talk in detail about the sound of the J and we give you more examples, so please check out video two. Right, so Spanish speakers, it's not ayuda in Portuguese, it's ajuda. Um, now, how about the word salida? So in Spanish, we have the L, salida, I but know. in Portuguese, se, se la L se va, no se pronuncia la L. No ten L, saída. O verbo é sair. Ok, so remember it's a saída. Isso. Okay. Right. Then we have a really nice um, sentence, useful for our class. Mm -hmm. A sua palavra de força, de fé e de carinho. In Spanish it's, e aquella palavra de força e de fé que me has dado. Yeah, então palavra, it has the V. And in Portuguese, the sound of the V is the same as it is in English, V. 
And Spanish speakers many times uh, pronounce the V and the B the same way, but the V is actually a different sound than the B. So for the V, you have to move your top teeth to your lower lip, so it's palabra, not palabra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have the word forza. We have again the C cedilla. So remember, it doesn't sound like a Z, forza. But we also have the sound of the O. We have um, two sounds, a few sounds for the O, and this one is closed, forza. So if I were to exaggerate, I would not be able to open my mouth. I would be O, O, forza. Because in the next sentence, he says the word sozinho, alone, and that's the open O, so. If I were to exaggerate, I would say, oh, like someone in awe oh, or something, right? So, sozinho, but here, forza. Okay, and then the verb forza, forza also has a different sound, right? Yeah, the, there's a verb forza, and it's the open sound, forza. Mm -hmm. A lot to pay attention to, there, <laughs> isn't there? Okay. Now, in the next section of the song, or the next section that we're going to go over, it, we hear it over and over again in the song, it's Não preciso nem dizer Tudo isso que eu lhe digo Mas é muito bom saber Que você é o meu amigo In Spanish it's Não preciso nem dizer Todo isso que eu te digo Mas é, pero é bueno assim sentir Que eres tu, meu grande amigo I'm so happy it's the first time I hear mais instead of pero. <laughs> <laughs> I always hear pero instead of mais. <laughs> See, you're infecting me with Portuguese and my Spanish. <laughs> okay, so pay attention to the verb dizer. Well, two things. One is the G. You might be asking, why is Luciana saying G? I have a video pronunciation of the letter D, and it will answer all these questions. But it's G zer. That's important because I actually make this mistake a lot. So if you look, it's D-I-Z-E-R in Portuguese, and it's D-E-S-I-R in Spanish. So it's very important to read the lyrics as you're hearing, so that way you're making um, a verbal and a um, visual representation, like imprint in your mind about how yeah. this, the word should be. Dizer. And then we have tudo isso. Pay attention. Tudo. Não Todo. Todo is a different word and it's going to be in our next video. Todo, toda. But here is tudo. It means everything. It's never followed by a noun. Não é seguido de substantivo. And so one example is if a mother is talking to a child and says, Did you eat all your food? And the child says, I ate everything. Tudo. I ate tudo. When Brazilians say tudo bem, it's tudo, it's not todo. Okay, so in Spanish it's tu, todo eso, and in Portuguese it's todo isso. Tudo, right? tudo isso, and also isso, right? So the demonstrative pronouns are really interesting. We have a masculine, a feminine, and a neuter, um, gender neutral. The masculine is este, mm -hmm. like this paper, este papel. So would you say este ou esse papel? Depends. Este is the first person, este papel, because it's with me. But I have the second person pronoun, which is esse papel, like this paper with you. Esse. Oh, so it's just like saying este e esse, like in, yeah. like in Spanish. Yeah, and you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, Brazilians don't really pay attention and probably don't remember this rule. But if you write business communication, then you, you need to know it, because it will make a difference on how you're writing this company, meaning your company, or this company, meaning their company. So, but in, in a day-to-day -day thing, it doesn't really make a difference if you say este or esse. Okay. And the feminine is esta or essa. Mm -hmm. And there's the isto that is never followed by a noun. So it's just isto. Like if I say, what is this? O que é isso? Or o que é isto? All right. Okay, um, now what else do we have here? Oh, then we have that tudo isso que eu le digo. What's this le thing? It's kind of confusing because in Spanish you would say todo, todo eso que yo te digo. And I could, mm -hmm. tudo isso que eu te digo, I'm using the pronoun that agrees with tu, mm -hmm. but we don't use tu in, in all of Brazil, and lhe is the pronoun that agrees with você. So this is saying 
all this, tudo isso, that I tell you, that I say to you, que eu lhe digo. I could say, tudo isso que eu digo a você. And I do have a blog post on the use of lhe. It's called, quem lhe contou? How to use lhe. So check out my blog, my blog post because it talks about the different rules for where you place the pronoun. Okay, excellent. And if you want to uh, find the lyrics to both the versions in Spanish and Portuguese yeah. on the blog post at Street Smart Brazil, you will find the link to the lyrics in both languages and links to the videos in both Spanish and Portuguese of this song. And if you want to know more about the details of really how to break down songs, uh, TV shows, movies, and other media to learn a foreign language, please find my book, Language is Music, and you can find me on the internet at languagesmusic.com, or in Spanish, it's elediomasmusica.com. Yeah, and please visit my website, streetsmartbrazil.com. We have flashcards on the site, we have many cultural blog posts, and also the lessons are all there. Subscribe to my mailing list so you keep up to date of, with what's coming up, and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you see all our videos when we upload them. Muito obrigada por watching this. We hope it helps you speak Portuguese with more confidence. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next videos about the days of the week in Portuguese and also a song by Chico Buarque about life under the dictatorship in Brazil so you can learn a bit more about Brazilian history and the social situation in the country. Ciao! Adios! <laughs>